Um, okay, we are now recording and we have a quorum. Okay, great. Um, so we'll wait to do um, the minutes, I think, for five since some Steve and Darcy may be joining then, correct? Um, so uh, let's maybe just start, Andra, with um, the report. Okay. Um, hang on a sec. Do you want me to share it, Andra? Yeah, could you? Yeah, let me see if I can. Uh, I've got a second monitor now, which makes my life a bit easier. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I, I do too. So that's why I'm sometimes looking away <laughs> in a strange angle. I'm not quite set up. Set up my uh, monitor is quite right yet. <laughs> uh huh. I'm not staring out into space. Huh. Yeah, I have the same thing. <laughs> see, that's why everyone all of a sudden is like looking off to the side. Yeah. <laughs> so are you seeing the annual report? Yes. Okay. Yes. Great. Um, so I, I, I took the version that Stephanie had edited that Laura then sent out after the meeting. So I was working from the, the notes that um, I think, Laura, you put in during last meeting while we were discussing it and um, made the, the changes that um, I, I hope addressed those, those issues. Um, big one was a reorganization of the, the recommendations quote in quotes and to make them less recommending and more ideas since we don't really know what we're going to be recommending it. Um, and so that part, um, uh, like number four, I think. Do, do you want me to just scroll down to four? Yeah, just to make sure people agree with the way I or reorganized it. This this part. Yeah. So, um, the, the, the language at the beginning may have moved, but it was in there before. Um, and then I give a couple of things about the context for funding, starting with um, Ashwin's paragraphs about equity. And then can you go down, Stephanie? Mm -hmm. um, then I, I, I guess this was somewhere, but I, I, I think I pulled pieces from different places um, and called it partnerships, other ways to ease the funding, the costs on the town. Um, So, and then the, the general idea of spreading out the responsibilities among all the staff. And um, so I, I, there was a lot of redundancy about this throughout the document. I at least reduced that. Um, so, but this is, you know, that's, that's where the climate lens part is, is where I put anything about how to reorganize the departments or, you know, put it into job descriptions. Um, and then what was under capital budget request just came down to the one thing about the resident capital request. Um, I did add, add at the the end of that, since we're, we've made some progress on the BRIC grant, um, that a grant may partially subsidize this. Not very controversial. 
And then the operating budget requests probably changed the most. Um, so reiterate, it's going to take staff time. Um, but I wanted to make sure that the request for an interim got out there really clearly. Like that's something that we really would like to have in the this year, next year's budget. Um, and that's something Stephanie you've made clear that I could be really helpful. Um, Extremely. So, yeah. Um, and then the rest is anticipates the need for. Um, so that that's like toning down the recommends all of these things. Mm -hmm. But I included all the things that were listed there before. And then I offered one thing, go up a little bit, Stephanie. Mm -hmm. um, Laura captured, I think, Steve's comments in, in the notes on the last version that we don't know what our specific recommendations are for projects and you know actions. Mm -hmm. So I couched it in terms of here's why we'll need staff time. Um, and I chose, I didn't include them all because um, I think that's what people were saying. So I just selected the ones that um, I thought provided a variety of examples. Um, so if anyone feels strongly about one that I didn't choose and wants to put it back in, should um, look through those and let me know. Um, and then I did, I added the, the zoning changes. Um, oh, wait, can you go up again? Yeah. It's at the very top. Oh, right here. well, that's interesting. I moved it to the second one in my last, last version. Hmm. Well, it doesn't matter that much. I'll look and make sure that there's nothing else that I made in that last, last version. Another change. Um, do you want me to keep going? Um, it's up to people. Are you reading it? I can't see everybody, so I'll scroll, slow, scroll slowly. Yeah, just stay there. So, so, well, I guess everyone's read the first one. Yeah. Got to turn the light on. So does it look okay? Yeah, this looks good to me. And I don't think community engagement changed at all. There might have been some word changes. I believe uh, Gazi Kaya's name is wrong. Misspelled. Yeah. Thank you. Good eye, Sarah. Um, so the only other thing I did add and I mentioned in the email was uh, um, a mention of the uh, youth advocates who came to our last meeting. And that is up in the introduction, I think. Um, Do you want me to go back all the to those hop? Yeah. Okay, so it would be at near, I think near the end of the introduction. Let's see. Um, 
No. I think it might be below here. Yeah. Okay. Here it is. Right here. Yeah. One of the most innovative aspects of our committee's work has been our approach to community engagement. So it goes through, for example, um, things that we heard from community members. So the last sentence is what I added. Can I make a wording suggestion there just to replace public safety with policing? Because public safety is really broad and includes oh, yeah. the good stuff. Yeah. Right. And what the what we were hearing was really about policing. That's right. Does that look good? All right. Thank you so much, Andrea. This is yeah. I had one minor um, wording change as well. Okay, let's uh, but, do it. But also, thank you, Andrea, and everybody yeah, else yeah, yeah, for yeah. Um, putting this in really good shape. Um, so, if you can go, I think the top of page five. Uh, um, just tell me what it is. Yeah, what section it is. Um, what's well, the, I just had it marked on my oh, yeah, copy. Uh, it's under partnerships. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I was just suggesting a partnership with local colleges and university. <laughs> um, that's number two. Yeah, well, uh, yeah. Uh, oh, and the Roman numeral, uh, double I in number two. Yeah. Partnership with local and um, colleges. colleges and university or, or institutions of higher education or something like that. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm going to say institutions of yeah, okay. higher yeah, better. But I would keep the local in there. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Sarah, did you see anything else? No, this is incredible, Andra. It's a lot of work. Thank, Thank you. you. So part of the idea when Laura and I, um, when Laura got me to take the lead on this, <laughs> was that um, some pieces of this would end up being a part of the CARP as our introduction or or perhaps our, you know, part of our summary of the CARP, that, that it'll serve another purpose as well. Yeah, definitely. Okay, are we good? Do you want me to stop sharing? Yeah, I think we're good, thank you. Um, Great. So I think the next steps would just be to submit it. And Andra, um, I'm happy to have you submit it to Lynn and Paul on behalf of ECAC. Um, I'm assuming, I think that's who we would send it to, correct? Uh, yes. Well, we, um, so it just gets submitted to the town council's packets, right? That's, so um, we submit it to Paul, on behalf of um, the committee, I would just forward it on to them and it would get into the next town council packet. Yeah. So when you have the, you know, because I know you said this may not be the, the final, final version. Yeah, I gotta you, just check. Yeah, take a look and um, once you know, just forward that on to me. Yeah. Um, yeah, but maybe we also want to um just send a it by email to the town council directly as well um with uh, that's anything? yeah no. no we no okay. we send it to the we send it to the, um lynn okay. it gets included in their packet right. we don't send it directly so and then what they do is usually pretty pro forma they they 
accept the reports from the committees into the record or something, you know, it's like, I, I don't think that there's actually usually even discussion um, unless a counselor chooses to bring it up for discussion. Yeah, there isn't. I mean, that was my understanding because I talked to Paul about it a little bit and he just basically, and I talked to Athena as well. Um, and she said, you know, it is just basically they vote to accept the report. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, if I remember correctly from our conversation last time, Darcy mentioned that, I mean, there's a slight possibility that someone could ask a question about it. Um, so maybe once we know wh when we're on the agenda, some of us or all of us can try to attend. Um, but I believe that's that's all we need to do. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I, I I really regret that I didn't make enough time to do it on time. Um, but I I did attend the meeting on the fourth. That well, the first of the three meetings that was supposed to be fifteen minutes long about the zoning. <laughs> and it went for two hours. So they had a very long night. I don't think any of them were thinking very much about any committee reports. <laughs> so it might be to our benefit that they, they would have a little brain space to actually read it before the next meeting. Yeah, agreed. It might have been a strategic move. <laughs> <laughs> By accident. That was a pretty wild meeting. Yeah, what's the, they're waiting, right? Or they're having more discussion? No, no they, they, they went ahead with exactly what they had proposed. Oh, okay. CRC proposed. Um, and there was an alternative proposal brought forward by Kathy Shane um, that had she was the only one who mentioned climate in the whole two hours. Um, she had added some other general categories of things to have um, looked at that weren't in the pretty narrow list of ideas that CRC came up with. So, um, but that was voted down Well, well, we will have an opportunity to review the CRC stuff. I just got an email with it from Mandy Joe, and so we'll um, put that in the packet for next. Yeah, time. that's good. Or the CPC, not the CRC. I'm sure we can, you know, insert our a conversation into the process a couple of places. Um, right. It just shows that the shift of the mindset hasn't shifted yet. All right, so let's give, I think out of fairness, we should wait until five to start yeah, yeah, yeah. the discussion. So anyone looking at the news? Trying not to get caught up in it. <laughs> so Andre, what's the um what's the like uh the sense about the baker signing the climate bill? Uh it's um People are, here, are, are, are feeling pretty confident that he, it makes no sense for him to veto given his, you know, belief <laughs> and, and actions so far about climate. So it, it doesn't agree with everything 
in his plans, but yeah, people think he will. Um, but we really want to make sure he does because this is the biggest legislative changes since we got the Global Warming Solutions Act, right? What are people at Ceres thinking? Yeah, just a lot of, um, you know, they've sent out calls to our BICEP network, which is like our network of corporations that engage on policy to like ask them the same that to um, email the governor and, um, you know, ensure it gets signed. Um, I've asked my colleague that leads our mass stuff to send me any good roundups that he comes up with. Oh, good, yeah. Um, because I think once it's signed, we should probably look through it and, yeah. um, you know, kind of you figure out what in our plan maybe we, you know, seems to be happening on the state level versus what we need to make sure we're pushing or what additional resources are going to be available because of this of the state level plan. Yeah. I was really excited to see the net zero stretch code in there. Uh, yeah, that was our Joe Comerford. Nice. <laughs> because of us, because of Amherst. Zero energy bylaw that got her educated about it. That's awesome. Uh, Laura, do you want me to post the agenda here? Um, sure, that'd be great. Five o'clock, where are they? <laughs> yeah, not here yet. Okay, so are you seeing the agenda? I can't ever tell. Not yet. No, we're just seeing your um, files. Okay, hold on. How about now? Yes. Okay, so um, we can go through the minutes. Um, um, first, sorry, I just got a text asking how to pick up a kid. Um, <laughs> uh, go through the minutes, I think in public comment, of course, if anyone's here, um, I think we'll skip staff updates and ECAC member updates to start just because I wanna make sure we have plenty of time to do this discussion of our work we need to do for the um, action plan. Uh, and we're having a meeting next week that'll be more traditional in the sense. So let's go first to the minutes. Do you want me to post those? Um, yeah, if you want to bring them up, that's great. All right, just bear with me a minute. They're long, so. I don't know if you all have your own copy to read or you're actually reading this. It might be easier to just read them on your own if you can. 
Yeah, I'm just pulling mine up now. We were we were all there, right? Yes. Okay. Because I'm realizing that if one of us is going to abstain, then it won't pass, right? Yep. I just realized niche is just a typo. Can I ask a question? Um, I believe that Birdie named himself in the meeting, but I just want to make sure that we aren't, that we're all set with protocols about putting the names of minors into these documents. Um, it was a public session. Birdie did name themselves, uh, themselves in the, in the meeting. Um, I don't know that there's anything, I, I've never, that's never really come up before. So I can, I could just say a high school student and take Birdie's name out. I, I, I really don't know. I was just wondering because it seems like it might, I could imagine it being an issue. I don't know. Um, I don't, you know, like I guess say, it's a public session. It's a public meeting and they did, it was recorded and they identified themselves. Okay. So that sounds fine. I was just, just. I'll, I'll leave it in and if I, I can always just ask somebody. Uh, I don't know that we have any strict protocol for um, minors if they're attending meetings. Cool. Just noting that uh, Ghazi Kaya's name is misspelled again. Where? Uh, uh, the very top of the last page. Of the very last page? Yeah, yeah. Um, just the, the second line. Right, I, I, it doesn't have the Y on it. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Anything else? Just yell out and I'll correct it. Is the discussion about the CRC um, referring to the housing plan meant to be zoning plan? Or was there also something about housing? I can't remember. So I'm honestly a little mixed up about it all myself, but I attended a meeting, I was asked to attend a meeting of the C, hold on, let me just make sure these um, acronyms. Okay. I was asked to attend a meeting of the CRC about comments on their comprehensive housing plan. Okay. So I think that's a level down from the zoning discussion, correct? Or different? Yeah, it's different. Di different, yeah. Yeah. So that's what we have, we'll have on the agenda next time. Okay. Oh, I still haven't done that memo about pace, have I? Shoot, I need to do that. But I, I do think that the two conversations got um, mixed together because then Darcy, um, the, the letter that we sent was about the zoning. Yeah, and Darcy maybe did say this, but she probably meant the zoning plan since that what that's what did come up on that Monday. Where is that? Hi Darcy. Hi. Um, it is in the number four ECAC member update. So first, Laura updated us about the invitation to attend the CRC 
on the comprehensive housing policy. And then it morphed into your update about the zoning plan. Right. It's here, it's, it says the housing plan under yours. Well, it says it was interesting that the CRC asked for input on the housing plan. That was me saying they oh, should oh, also, I see. Okay, they yeah. also ask for input on the zoning plan because that's, oh, yeah. okay. that's a sector that we're looking at. Okay. Then I just didn't read carefully enough. Yeah, no, that was that had a little little sarcastic twist to it. <laughs> Oh, I just realized we need someone to take the minutes for this meeting. Oops. Oh, yeah. Well, we haven't gotten very far. Um, what do so, we do? Well, the beginning is easy-ish, so sure. I can always edit that part. But if someone could, uh, Sarah took them last time, so. I still have a wrist injury. I'm very sorry, and I'm still trying to minimize typing. Um, and my voice to text feature, I think, is a little too awkward to use in meetings. Um. About, I assure you, it's not for lack of like wanting to. <laughs> who made, who did these minutes? Sarah. So I was just saying, Sarah did the last set. So and Darcy did the ones before that. I guess I'll, I'll do, do it. Oh, somebody has a hand raised or no, sorry. Um, oh, Steve does. Steve, do you want to, Steve here? Trying to get in? Oh, he's trying to get in, sorry. Sorry, Steve, I didn't see you in there. Thank you. Hello. You're welcome. Sorry about that. I, yeah, I can't find the, I couldn't find the uh, invite. So I used a public link. Well, we're just going through the minutes right now. Okay. Yeah. And on the minutes, make sure you note that this is a historic day in American history. <laughs> for too many reasons. <laughs> it's just me or do we always have something wild going on when we meet? <laughs> always, right? <laughs> I like the background noise there. <laughs> like, yeah, case in point, right? And the chaos in my house. <laughs> okay, kid. <laughs> it is quite, quite amazing. So I, uh, I move to accept the minutes. I second. As amended. I second. Okay. Hold on, I'm just taking notes here. Okay, I'm gonna do a, a roll call. I'm just gonna go in order as I see you all on my screen. So uh, Rose. 
Yes. Drucker. Yes. Dumont. Yes. Durr. Yes. Roof. I'm going to abstain because I haven't had a chance to look at them. Okay. Uh, Ravi Kumar. Yes. Breger. Yes. All right. Then the minutes are approved. Okay, great. So we're going to move straight into um, kind of our discussion about what our role as ECAC um, needs to be and can be as we move into this phase of Linnaean drafting the action plan. Um, as of right now, um, at the next meeting, we'll go through a more detailed timeline, but um, Steve had asked just for clarification on the timeline in advance of this meeting. So um, to let folks know the current plan that is that uh, Linnaean is going to send us a draft of um, the action plan on the 19th of February. Um, we are, we have scheduled with them that they're going to give us an update on their progress, how they're doing, and any potential changes to that timeline um, on the meeting on the 27th. So not our meeting next week, but the following one. Um, we have built in about a month or not a month, three weeks for our, ourselves to review that document. Um, so one thing I, I'll talk to Stephanie about and we can talk about more next week is maybe scheduling a retreat at some point um, to review that together in a little bit more details, focus a little more time on that. Maybe the week of the, um, the third or fourth week of, uh, basically right after we get the report um, of February. So Sorry, interrupt Laura. But, yeah. um, did you ask for public comment? Yeah, we have um, Andrew Glace here and he's got his hand raised. Oh, okay. So sure. before we launch into the timeline, sorry. Yeah, sure, let's have Andrew. Okay, uh, Andrew, hold on one moment and I'll. Okay, Andrew. I think you need to unmute yourself. So Andrew, we can't hear you. I have unmuted you, so I don't know if you've. Yeah, I don't know why I've unmuted you, so you should be able, I don't know why we're not hearing you. All right, well, we'll tell you what. Um, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna move An Andrew into the room, if that's okay. Sure. And see if that helps. I know Andrew, so I'm not. Okay. Andrew, how about now? All right, well, let's, yeah. if Andrew, if you can figure it out on your end, um, feel free to raise your hand again and, and you can jump jump in. Uh, you can also send me a text message if you want, or I mean, a, a, an email message and I will uh, check my email and read your comments if you want. That would work too. Oh, there he is. <laughs> We can see you, but we still can't hear you. We can maybe looking. Not sure if he can hear us. How's that? Ah. There, there we go. Yep, now we can hear you. 
Okay. Yes. I press the I press the microphone button. What do you know? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Maya. All right, I'm on. Thanks for bringing me in. Sure. I have no comments. I just wanted to get in. <laughs> oh. Just want to play at the party. Cool. Great. Well, thanks for joining okay. us. <laughs> okay. I'm going to I'm going to mute you just during the meeting, Andrew, okay? That's fine. And if you if you have um, any comments, just raise your hand. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Great. Um so all to say is that um, we do have a plan for receiving uh, the draft report in February and we have instructed Linnean to come to us on the 27th to give us an update um, and let us know if there's any, if they assume any changes to that plan. Um, and in the coming meetings that we have, we'll have to think through our review process and particularly around how we want to get community input, what that community input would look like. Um, so looking forward to discussing that a bit more as we get a bit closer to that. Um, but for today, the reason why we're having this meeting is because there was definitely some interest among the committee to clearly understand what role we can be playing in these next few weeks and months as the CARP is being developed um what would be most beneficial to the consultants what's not sort of repeating the work that they're doing but what's also setting ecac up to have feel ownership and you know strongly about the carp and be able to talk about that and communicate that with our community um and be ensure that the carp really supports us in the work that we want to continue to do to meet our goals so uh, I took that feedback back to Linnean. Uh, Stephanie and I met with them before the holidays. Um, and they came back with something that we had actually talked about and did a little bit of before, um, which was helping them really prioritize our actions and evaluate them based on the criteria that we've been talking about. GHG emission reductions, um, equity impacts, how costly, how it's gonna impact resiliency, how, how we will do this work, who we will have to partner with. This is something that we started doing a few months ago, but we didn't really have quite, um, we didn't have really have a process to do it. So Lauren worked over break to develop this really impressive spreadsheet for us. I don't wanna show it because um, I don't think it'll show up on the screen very well. Um, does everybody have it open on their own computers? Great. So the first tab I, I wanna draw your attention to is the ECAC info tab. So this, this tab lays out sort of how this worksheet works and what we're, what we're doing. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk through this worksheet and I'm gonna talk through it an example that I've done. Um, and then let's just, I wanna discuss with you, I have one question for you actually about how we wanna think about greenhouse gas emissions. And then I wanna discuss sort of the timeline for how we actually do this work. So if you look to the ECAC info tab, I tried to sort of outline what the purpose of this activity is. Um, you know, we, we know we have, some we have some sectors, we have some strategies within those sectors, we have actions, um, we have details about what those actions mean. Lauren's taken our feedback and tried to make those more action oriented, but I actually found that going through this process really helped me identify what specific actions we need to add to those descriptions. So I think this will be really helpful to, to do that even more. Um, 
so what we're really trying to do is a gut check that the actions we've identified line up with the goals of our of our plan. If they don't, then we either need to edit them or we need to remove them. Um, and like I said, this is an option opportunity for us, oh, that word's misspelled, to make actions more concise and actionable. Also a gut check that our goals are lining up with our priorities, both of ECAC and the town and the MVP process. So there may be things in here that as an ECAC, you know, it's more resiliency focused and maybe not something that we would have put on the top of our list, but it's important because this is this is not only supporting ECAC, it's also supporting the town and the MVP process. So just flagging that. But if there's specific actions that aren't meeting ECAC's goals, then we need to edit those. Um, we need to do a gut check that our priority actions are meeting most of the goals that we want them to meet. And if they aren't, ref refine them. Um, or maybe this, and this, this process of doing this evaluation is gonna help us discuss and debate those priorities. Um, and then begin to identify how we're gonna implement them. Who needs to be at the table? Who needs to have ownership? What policies are needed? So that's what I see. Um, and it, and I'm, it's really important for ECAC to do this because we're the ones that are best suited to do, to do this analysis um, based on our experience working on the committee based our experience in town. Um, so the rest of this worksheet just sort of lays out these next two lines, the worksheet sh sheet map and the filling in the worksheet are just instructions for you to look back to when you actually do it. I'm gonna talk through them as I go. And then we'll, we'll come back to the worksheet timeline after I go through what we're trying to do here. Does that make sense? Okay, so if we go to the, of, of, oh yeah, Sandra. Well, I, I just don't know if it, uh, our attendee, Andrew, has access to this and I, I, it doesn't, might not show up well, but at least you'd be able to see it. I uh, just, I just sent it to him, Andrew. Oh, okay. Okay. I sent him the whole packet. So okay. Andrew, it's in, check your email. Okay, great. So there are four other tabs down here, the evaluation itself, action details, key terms, and other comments. So if you go to the evaluation tab, this is the full worksheet. And if you look to the uh, left-hand side here, columns A through F, this is where Lauren has laid out an evaluation framework and she's identified four topic areas. So implementation, resiliency, emissions, and equity. And then for each of those, some different sort of evaluation metrics. And she's spelled out here, you know, what a plus, a zero, or a, a minus would mean for each of these evaluation metrics. So it takes a little time to read through and and, um, and get a sense of. I mean, I think that for equity, you know, does. I mean, you guys can all, all read through these yourselves. Um, but the idea is, is that for each of the sectors, so if you go now to columns G and beyond, you'll see that they we have listed here each of our sectors, each of our strategies, and then each of the actions below them. The ones that are highlighted are the actions that we've highlighted sort of as key actions for 2025 at this point, that could change, but that's what we have so far. Is anybody else having trouble scrolling over past column F? Yeah. yeah. So I did. Yeah. 
Oh, I now I see it. Okay. Freeze frame it. So um, you can unfreeze. I froze it so I could, when I was doing it, trying to do it myself, I could actually read the um, evaluation frameworks at the okay, same time. Yeah, okay. I mean, the tab at the bottom when I just scrolled it was fine. Yeah. Um, and these all line up with that document that we've been looking at that is included in the packet with some track changes based on our last conversation and also all copied into the tab action details. So if you go to the action details tab, you'll see all of those actions listed out and then all of the details explaining what they are. So what I did in advance of this meeting is I went to column BP and BQ, which are the first columns in pink associated with transportation. And I started going through them and trying to do the framework. So it took me a while, um, but I did find it to be extremely valuable. And I think once I got into the process, um, it got a little bit easier. So I would suggest that folks um, try it out and see how it works. Um, it is a bit overwhelming, but it, it, uh, it did help me really get some clarity around some of the things that I think we've been talking about more abstractly. So what I want to do right now is just walk you through this example that I did, which is column BP, safety and connectivity in South Amherst, which if you go back to the action details tab, this is corresponding to um, column C, row 63. And the details that were currently listed is that safety and connectivity in South Amherst, the details are that it would improve safety and connectivity from South Amherst to regional commercial and employment hubs and essential services. So on the evaluation tab, I went through and I tried to rank, or not rank, but I guess rank, um, this action against these criteria. Does the strategy enhance economic and educational opportunities for specific populations? Does it neither enhance nor non-enhance, or does it reduce? And so I saw it as a plus that it that if implemented, it will enhance economic and educational opportunities. I saw um, it does seek to, if I understand the definition of South Amherst, then it does seek to prioritize specific communities. Although I did, this did make me realize that we need to define what we mean by South Amherst in the report. And so if you go back to the action details tab, you'll see in the note next to row 63, I wrote, you know, need to define South Amherst in the report. This the section on procedural procedural equality. Um, I found I couldn't rank those, and the reason I couldn't rank those is because they seem to be more tied to how we're actually going to implement the action than the action itself. And so I made a note actually in the other columns tab that it was hard to evaluate this, and so maybe it's not, this procedural equality is not necessarily about specific actions themselves, but a section that we need in the report. Like how are all of our actions gonna be done in a way that's procedurally equitable? Um, but I also noted that maybe 
we shouldn't we shouldn't rush to conclusions because this is only one action and of all the actions maybe this do this does work for those other actions so i noted that as well so when you're doing this if you have a question about something that you're not sure where to put it add it to this other comments tab so that we can go through it through it together um a question this the the safety and connectivity in south amherst what do we read to learn about that in order to be able to evaluate it yep so the details on that are under the action details tab yeah Yep, so row 63. Yeah, and that says kind of the same. God, I don't like these. Um, yeah, it's not too clear on the words exactly. in column D, I see, that, it, that uh, illuminate that a little bit. I frankly don't remember that as an element that had, we've discussed previously, inclusion in the CARP. Um, so this certainly came up a lot in our transportation task group. Oh, okay. And yeah, this is exactly my point, Steve. I think that we've talked to we've talked about the the fact that this description is not descriptive enough. Um, and I found that once I started going through this evaluation, I was able, and those are the notes I've ha I have in column E here, I was able to, to like pick out specific things. Like if these are our evaluation criteria, if these are our goals, then we need to stay space say specifically how these actions are going to implement them. So um, like if you can see, add in wording that clarifies this action will be implemented or overseen in some way by the population it tends to it tends intends to serve so there is one of the evaluation criteria structural equality 3a this strategy encourages diverse leadership of the project policy or program that is representative of the population served i think we would all agree that we shouldn't invest in improving connectivity for south amherst without having that be led by the community members in South Amherst that actually would need to use whatever solutions were come up with, but that's not clear in our action. So I gave it a plus with a note because that I said, I included in the note, like the only way that this would actually be a plus is if we included that language in the action. Yeah, Ashwin. So yeah, that's helpful because my first thought when I looked at this is, well, the answer is it totally depends on how it's implemented for basically all of these, you know? <clears throat> um, and so that that kind of leads me, so I'm, I'm happy to go through, especially the ones that I know the most about and like do this exercise and treat it primarily as a qualitative exercise and see more than the plus, the zero or the minus that germane outcome as being or the germane output as being like a description of what would need to happen to ensure that this action succeeds on this axis, right? And I'm I think that could be useful, but I guess maybe maybe I missed this. But um, how will this uh, scorecard be used? Because you know, like if if there's a if a bunch of us give pluses to an action, will that somehow like elevate it, or is this more of a qualitative tool for Linnaean to use as they put meat on the bones of this document? Yeah, that's a great question, and I think what we first need to do is go through and 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 do it as as. Um, my sense is that it's going to be, it, we're using this for ourselves first and foremost to make sure that all of these actions that we've been talking about do meet our goals. And if they don't meet our goals, they're edited so that they do meet our goals, like in this example. Or we may find that there's some actions on this list that we don't, maybe isn't this, the CARP is not the best place for them. or they should be fed somewhere else or, you know, whatever. So I think that first and foremost, let's use this as an opportunity to make sure that the actions we have listed are the actions that are going to support our goals. 
if um, I don't see, so like in the Concord plan, for example, each of the actions that did make, make it to their final plan, it showed how they ranked in all of these areas. Is it addressing emissions? Check. Is it addressing equality? Check. You know, so we may we may decide that that's something we want to include in our final report as well. I think as a first pass, though, each task group should go through their sector, and then at our next meeting, we kind of all need to look at everybody's and make sure that you know anyone in a task group that raises a question like, "I'm not sure how to rank this," like we can talk about it together. I think we need to do some work as ECAC to get this to a place where um, we feel like we have some agreement on how things are are scored, particularly the ones that we think are our priorities for 2025, because that's going to be where I think we're going to be focusing most of our communication effort and um, outreach for for the you know next year and so right. Thanks, Sarah. So one, thing, so one thing I noticed when I started looking at the um, inventory of emissions for this for this action is that it actually this action on its own is not really impacting emissions. Um, and so you'll see here on the evaluations tab, line eleven, this strategy significantly reduces what would be expected without intervention from transportation emissions, I put a zero that it had little or no beneficial effect with a note. And the note I added was that um, this is intended to, to reduce reliance on signal, single occupancy vehicles, but on its own, that's not gonna re reduce emissions. Like this, this on its own is not gonna reduce emissions. It has to be done in collaboration with some of the other highlighted transportation things like PVTA improvements, EV charging infrastructure, EV access. So um, that doesn't mean that we shouldn't include this as an important action. And, and we're not ready to make that decision yet. We're still in, the, in this first phase of evaluation, but I just wanted to, to flag that here. And I, I imagine there'll be other actions for which a similar outcome occurs. Laura, I just wanted to jump in too and say that, you know, you all will go through this process. There are things that certainly came out of the task group process that weren't specifically actionable items that will have any significant impact on reductions, but were important to the community. And I think those are the, you know, as you go through your process, Linnaean is going to certainly highlight that, you know, those which you all identify, but there is going to be a place for them to include language and reference to those other things that came out of the task group process. So even if you don't necessarily prioritize them, there's going to be room for them in the document because that's important to this process as well in terms of the resiliency piece. Yeah, Dwayne. Uh, yeah, just also, sorry if I miss it, but just related to that. So as we go through this, and I, 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 I definitely appreciate Linnean and, and Lauren, Stephanie put, putting this together um, and the, um, the, the um, uh, process that, that helps us go through this. I guess my main question or my question at this point is um, you mentioned sort of to potentially prioritize the shorter term actions, you know, the 2025 <clears throat> um, actions that we might highlight in the plan as being short term actions. Is there some guidance here in terms of this list of, of um, I guess what show up as action in the action details or across the columns in the uh, evaluation of which ones um, we or Linnaean have sort of suggested are earlier actions or is that part of our evaluation is maybe to make some comments in terms of, is that something that can be done by 2025 or is it a longer term? Yeah, that's a good question. I So they have marked the one. So if you look here, the sector, the transportation sector is in deep pink and then the strategies are in a lighter pink. So the strategy here is improve infrastructure for walking and cycling. 
And the safety and connectivity in South Amherst is the highlighted one. My understanding is that th that is the one, it's the same color pink as the strategy. That is the one that someone, us together with Linnaean at some point has marked as a important one. Um, I don't know if, if, if that's the way it will end up, but that's your, that's your starting point, right? So those ones okay. that are highlighted the, the same color as the strategies are the ones that have been identified at some point as being the 2025 ones, but we need to go through and say, so like, I might say now after going through this exercise, this is an important thing. I don't think it's something that ECAC is going to focus on based on the fact that it doesn't really directly impact emissions, mm -hmm. but maybe it's something important that we need to tell the town that the town should be doing, or, you know, and I'm just spitballing. We need to all discuss these things, but like that would be one potential outcome of me doing this, this analysis um, for that particular action. Just a reminder that a lot of these came from those final sessions with the task group when you were all listed your priorities. And these came, those that are highlighted are the ones that came from that final analysis with the group. Okay. So that's why some of them may not seem like you would have identified them as a 2025 strategy, but they came from that group process where the group itself, the task group identified them as a priority. Good, thank you. So I think that this feels a little daunting and I felt a bit daunted when I started doing this process, but I do think that this is getting to where we want to be, which is how do we make sure the actions we have listed are actionable? So as I went through this process, you know, I was like, oh, this could, this could address that, but it has to say this, it has to also do this piece. Or it, it, you know, it actually it doesn't directly impact transportation emissions, and we need to be clear about that. Um, as well as helping us do this, it's the first step in helping us be able to have a sort of more quantity, a, a more thoughtful, qualitative discussion on actions that may or may not rise to the top of the list versus actions that may need to be put on someone else's plate or may need to be removed from this, the, the specific actions of the carp, who knows, right? What the out, end, end game will be. So that is, um, so I did find this process to be extremely helpful. Um, and I think that it, it will require us to sit down and go through them. Um, but, I think it's something that we've been wanting to do. And I think that this is giving us the framework to actually do that. Does I'm anybody... having trouble taking yeah. notes on this. I think that the note should just be, we discussed this framework. I don't think we need yeah, to go into you don't... Well, Yeah. But um, let's see, are we all here? No, we're missing. Jesse's not here. Jesse has a concussion and depending on how bad the concussion is, he will not be able to do this analysis. Oh, sure. <laughs> um, so we'll figure out how to, I'll figure out or Sarah can work with him as her, as the co um, lead to figure out how to do that. What, what happened, Laura? I don't know. I don't know if anyone else I don't, is doing I don't know either. Eldon said he couldn't attend because of a concussion. Oh dear. Yeah. Yeah. What's the timeline for this again? Yeah, so that's the that's the next thing to discuss. Um the, before I go there, I do want to have one technical discussion with you all um around the emissions inventory piece. So I I've split this up to be aligned with what is in the greenhouse gas inventory that we produced as a town and what's required for us to produce as part of the Green Communities Act, correct, Stephanie? Yep. Yeah. So they break up our emissions into these four general categories, stationary, transportation, agriculture, and waste. So stationary in this sense includes natural gas use and other fuel use in our buildings, as well as electricity. 
I was wondering if folks felt like it would be beneficial to separate those two things out here, separate electricity out from other sources of energy, or to keep it simple, let's just lump them all together if it reduces energy use in a building. It gets a check. At, at some point, we're going to have to separate those in order to determine how uh, progress for greenhouse gas emissions, because the, the gas and electricity have different um, carbon intensities. And, and also, for example, for evaluating the impact of the CCA. Right. Dang, that's that's all electric, so that's going to span a couple of different categories: buildings, transportation, so stationary. I, and trans yeah, I, I think we need to break them out if we're going to. We will eventually, and probably sooner is rather is better than later. I I would concur with that, and for additional reasons, um, um, stationary is a big part of of our emissions and it, it, it by this definition it covers you know both oil and gas that we use in our buildings to heat and electricity that we use to to um, um, light ourselves uh, but but you know with electrification that could become uh, it, you know it becomes a little bit um, merged together so I think it is important actually to separate them so we can can sort of keep our eye on tracking these things um, and, and understanding ourselves in terms of what actions are really addressing um, stationary emissions that are for heating, primarily heating buildings and what are, are um, uh, that we have, there's certain technical options to deal with those, reducing those emissions. Uh, and then that from electricity, which sort of is important because that feeds into the CCA, um, particularly the CCA, um, uh, um, action item. And it's also, it, it, it's normally, it's also kind of breaks it down like scope one and scope two emissions, uh, which is um, um, often the way you see it as well. I, I don't see where that is stationary, the types of emissions I have, I see, um, in, you know, kind of under the evaluation tab. It's a uh, row 10, 11, I, yeah, 12, there's, 13. Yeah, there's inventory emissions. So that's. Yeah, but it's, it's uh, in column C then. Broken right. Down. Oh, OK. Under inventory, the first, it's highlighted yellow in the oh, evaluation section, evaluation tab. Yeah, yeah. I, I also think it would be helpful to tease them out. We just need to be careful in that case that um, we don't accidentally make you know, because if if you're elect, if we're planning to electrify things, then that would, in the short term, turn potentially drive up emissions from electricity. But we save by reducing emissions from oil and gas for for heating, right? So we just want to make sure that we represent that completely. Okay, I think that I'm hearing mostly agreement, or it seems every agreement from everybody, and no disagreement here. So what if we have other criteria we want to add? So I think in the interest of um, of getting started on this, what I've what I've suggested is or what I am suggesting is that if you have a comment either about a criteria specifically, like I did, so I had a comment about, the procedure, procedural equality criteria. I added it to this other comments tab. Um, I think we should all add our comments there. So if you have a, a um, another criteria that you think we should add, or you you don't think this criteria is the right or this this um, evaluation is, is the goal is the right goal. Let's add those there. And I think we can talk about them all together next week. And if we all agree, yeah, we should add that in, then let's add it in. Um, but 
I would suggest we try to go through the process first before we change what we have right now. And the same with any missing actions? Yeah, so I've added here, um, <coughs> either put them in the other comments or if you go to the action details tab, all the way at the bottom, I've added a space where we can add more actions. Um, I don't want people to add it. I'm trying to make sure we're not editing directly this evaluation worksheet because then when we try to, so if like you added in another column and I added another column and then we tried to merge them, it would get messy. So um, let's try to keep those comments separate from this just for the first round or so. Okay, so I will split up stationary energy sources. For the time being, I'm just gonna split them up into electricity, electricity, oh, scope two basically, electricity-based emissions, and then um, other heating emissions. I know we could <clears throat> split them up more than that, but I think for the time being, just those two buckets, right? So combustion, direct combustion of fuels, and then electric. Probably be scope one stationary emissions. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so if you go back to the ECAC info um, worksheet, under worksheet map and filling in the worksheet, I've kind of I've tried to basically spell out what I've just talked about, um, including um, where to put comments or where to put additional actions. Um, I wanna to talk to you all about the process moving forward um, and what the timeline should be. So I've thrown out three options. Um, option one is the quickest turnaround, but I, I honestly don't think it's possible given the amount of time it took me to do, um, do the evaluation. I, I don't think it's likely that we could all get this done by, by Monday. Um, so I've got two other options. One is if we want to, if one task group or one person wants to volunteer to go through this for a couple more actions or for their whole sector between now and our meeting next week, we could use that as another way to just pressure test this method to make sure it is working and that it's, it's doing what it needs to be done needs to do. We don't have any other questions about it. Um, and then all the task groups would be asked to complete this evaluation by the 20th. I think that task groups should figure out the task group co-chairs, excuse me, just so just us. I think we should figure out how to do that. Like I think probably the easiest way is to have one task group member take half and the other task group member take half. And then maybe you get on the phone and just talk through any ones you have questions about. Um, but you know, I'll leave it up to the task group chairs to decide the best way to split this up, depending on your own workload and, and other things. If so, if somebody wants to volunteer to has time between now and next week and wants to try a, a few of these and bring those back to our meeting next week. Um, that would be great if if no one's willing to do that, or maybe we just op leave that open as an option. Um, I think the overall timeline is that the task group co-chairs should spend between now and the 20th to do an initial evaluation of all their actions. Um, and then we'll compile all that together and we'll plan on reviewing it at the all together at the meeting on the 27th. Linnaean's planning on attending that meeting just to give us an update. So it could be helpful to have them there to talk through it together. Um, and then we'll, we'll figure out what the final version looks like and when to send it sometime after that point. Yeah, Ashwin. Um, so just to make sure that I'm on the same page with others here, I'm, I'm looking at like the actions that are highlighted, the ones that we, I guess at some point set are kind of priority for 2025. And like, just to, to me, uh, in, in the land use task group, I 
the, the logic behind what's what's highlighted and what's not doesn't obviously pop out to me. Is it okay if I just kind of ignore what's highlighted or just kind of ignore, can we just agree to treat them all equally at this stage and not worry too much about the highlights for now? Again, I just wanna identify that those are the ones that came out of the task group process and that the group at the end of that process identified as a priority. So that's why they're highlighted. So you are aware that that's where those came from. Okay, cool. Um, so all, did then the other items that are not highlighted did not come out of the group meeting, sir? They came out of the meeting, but remember at the very end, you all were given a list and there was discussion about which ones, which items each task group saw uh, that should rise to that they that they prioritized. So the community leaders had input as to what they prioritized from the list. So they were all the, all those actions were there. They just specified what they chose as a priority, and that's why those are highlighted. So all the actions either came from your your task group process, or were things that you all identified previously in in the report that you did before or they came from other plans that you asked Linnean to go to and incorporate things that they thought were measures you would want to include. So all these actions came from somewhere. It's just that those are prioritized from your actual task group sessions. Except that it, not all of them were prioritized because they weren't all presented in our task groups. I know that some of those were never. So um, I think to, right, to just, list. Yeah, there's no, there's, n they're highlighted because they were part of the process. That doesn't mean that we have to treat them special in this right. thing or that they rise to the top of uh, priority in the plan. They're okay, just, cool. I, I just wanted to make that. Yeah, sorry. It's just yeah. so you all know where those priorities came from that the community leaders in your task group process at the very end, identified those things as their priority. Again, it doesn't not necessarily mean it's yours, but you need to understand that the community leaders identified those as priorities. That's okay. all. That, that, that makes sense. I, I do I do recall that discussion. I remember it being uh, a very long conversation with a lot of kind of pauses and breaks. And I'm, I'm not sure that the structure of that discussion necessarily lent itself to the most rigorous prioritization process. And I will personally be taking those highlights with a grain of salt to measure it with my assessment of the process. Okay. So we're at, we're out of time. What I think we should do is everybody should, so they don't forget everything we just talked about maybe try to do one or two between now and next week so that we can spend some time on the agenda, just making sure everybody gets it. There's no huge red flags. We don't need to change anything really drastic. Um, that's why I went through it and I was able to, um, to make sure that there wasn't anything that seemed completely out of place. Um, and so, and if that all goes well, we will, plan on following this timeline of having every task group co-chair do this work for their task group actions um, by the 20th. Does that sound fair to everybody? Yeah, do we, do we assume that the co-chairs cannot do it by next Monday? <clears throat> it took me two hours to do the ones I did. The one, the, the one. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's hard. so I think we need to give ourselves a little more time to make sure we do it right. We could at least it, will, it gets faster like I don't think it'll take us two hours for each one, but to read through everything and really think through um, it, it took a while. And so I also I, go ahead Darcy I'm sorry. I, it might make sense to at least check in with your co chair so that if each of us is doing one or something by next. Monday that we at least aren't duplicating each other's work. Agreed. Yeah. And I also want to remind you that this meeting is being recorded and that if you need to go back um, 
it will be available on YouTube. Just look up ECAC, <laughs> the meeting date. Um, if you have any trouble, just let me know. But if you need to, you know, reference this, this will, it will also be available for Jesse. Um, he can listen to it. He doesn't obviously need to watch it, but he can listen to it. Um, well, that'd and, be good for the concussion brain. Yeah. yeah, he probably doesn't need any of this right now. Um, but we should have it before the 20th. We want it in the packet. Yeah. So the, the timeline would be that if we give it to, if we get it to Stephanie by the 20th, she will com combine and circulate it by the 22nd and our next meeting is the 27th. So we'll have, that'll give us the weekend to look. And, and we're talking about adding language in the comments section of different, of, of our <clears throat> sectors that we were responsible for. Is that correct or not? For the next meeting? No, no, for the 20th. For the 20th, we should, if everybody does their own section, what we'll have on the, after the 20th is a fully completed evaluation framework. So for every action, there's either a plus, a zero, a negative, or a ND. And then any other actions we want to add or any other comments we have would be added to those tabs. So um, let me just ask, <clears throat> is the, um, we want to come to, we want to come together with one consensus um, aggregated evaluation to share with Lin Linnaean as, as well as um, information that might go into the report. But so if, if uh, Andra, for example, and I both do a number of di uh, common measures and um, come up with a bit different evaluations, do we, um, would the process be to, to work out uh, um, a, an average or a consensus between the two of us to, to put forward? Um, yeah, I think the idea would be that the task group co-chairs should agree to the rankings for your okay. task. Okay, so we might do it separately, but then separate, uh, but then apart from the meet, uh, these these joint meetings, um, just have a conversation to, to uh, come to some agreement um, of what we want to put forward. Yeah. Okay. And do we want to, do we have some, are we doing it on the... Um, how, where are we doing it? Where, where are we putting our? So right, like where I had my information. So um, the pink column BP safety. So I, I added it right into that evaluation matrix. But we will have a separate spreadsheet for each task. Everybody should be working on their same spreadsheet. Um, and the task task group co-chairs should coordinate. So, so Darcy, you and I may decide that I do the first two, the first couple, and you do the, the, the other ones, and then we compare and make sure we're all in agreement. And then we're, we as a, as a task group co-chair group will send Stephanie on the 20th, like here's all of the stuff for the transportation and waste. Yeah, I should be only getting four basically four spreadsheets to have to compile not eight yeah yeah i guess i i'm still a little confused as to um where i'm putting the rating because i don't see your i don't see an actual rating for the for all the different categories am i missing something for the ones that you did um laura yeah so are you on row bp or column BP, I'm sorry. On, in the actions detail? No. In the evaluations tab. Oh, okay, maybe that, that's the problem. So. So now I'm where? So if you scroll, you, you have to scroll over quite a bit, but it's column BP. Oh, okay. That's, that's what the problem has been, I guess. Um, 
I don't know how to scroll. That's the big problem. Is Anyway, I, I I guess I can figure it out later. I don't have to hold everybody up. I, yeah, and you and I can connect if you want to talk through it. I mean, we should connect anyway so we can decide who's going to do what. But I can. Um... Yeah, I haven't. I have not seen this yet. So okay. I, I have to figure out where it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make that one change to the emissions. And I'm going to send out a new version. So don't add anything yet. I'm going to send out a new version tonight with the I disaggregated stationary energy emissions. And then it'll be ready to start adding. So rename it to your own and start um, work with your task group co-chair to figure out who's going to do what. Um, and we'll spend some time next week making sure everybody understands what we're doing. Um, and that it's working for you. Does that sound good? Yes. Okay. Um, yes, Steve. Uh, last meeting, Linnean provided uh, top five strategy ideas. The, the CCA was one of those. That's that's on the spreadsheet. But there were a couple of others there that included um, energy reporting and transparency. Are those included? Those other um, top, the top five strategy, are they included in the spreadsheet? They should be, but I haven't double checked. So I will, will do that. Okay. Yeah. My understanding is that they're all in there, but I haven't looked either, but Laura, it's, um, specifically said they were including those. Lauren. Yeah. Lauren, sorry. Lauren. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Some of those ideas that Jim presented in the top five were not ones that were, uh, I don't think were ones that were highlighted through our um, task group processes. Okay, well, I'll look back to that list and it may be, I think Jim sent those, I don't know if he used all the same language. So I'll go and try to match those up. Okay. Yeah, I don't think they came from the task group process, Steve. They were just, he. they were asked to identify five top strategies to get us to the 25% reduction by 2025. So, they were they were all items that were referenced somewhere in your process, not specifically the task group process. But remember that all of this information came from the MVP process before you even convened as a committee. It came from the work that you all did on your own. It came from the task group process. So these strategies don't all come from one place. They come from all of that. So they basically sort of went through all of that information and came up with their top five. Right, that, yeah, that's fine. I realize that. I just wanted to make sure that those strategies were in the spreadsheet someplace so that they can be I'm, evaluated. Yeah, I'm pretty yeah. sure they are. I and think that, I was just gonna say, I think Lauren had said that they were highlighted somehow too, so. Okay. Um, and do we expect in the Climate Action Plan in the CARP when we have it, that we will have strategies with greenhouse gas emission reductions that meet the 2025 goals? The 2025 goals, yes. 2050, no, but 2025, yes. Okay. I mean, because I would caveat that in saying that I don't think we're going to have a detailed data analysis to say that by doing these 10 things, we're going to reduce 27.5% of our emissions, which is, I think, what, Steve, you're... Kind of what I was leading to. Yeah. yeah. How, there... how close to that are we going to get, I guess, is the question. My guess is they're going to sort of um, do sort of the estimates. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, uh, Linnean is going to? Um, yes. I believe so for the for just for the 2025 strategies. Okay. I think that should be a discussion point on the 27th because yeah. by that point we will have narrowed down ours a little bit more yeah. and then we can talk about how we're going to actually do that in the report. Yeah, cuz it depends on what you identify. Yes. Yes, and as I was studying the top five Linnaean strategies, it was 
clear that some of those will have benefits, but they might be three to five plus years out in terms of greenhouse gas emission reductions. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're great strategies to develop and now's the time to do them, but in terms of the 2025 target goal, likely not going to be that helpful. Well, it's going to be hard because the, you know, one of the biggest sectors that you need to address is the residential sector. And that's going to be hard. You know, that's going to be a hard one, I think. But we set our goals to guide us. Right. Yeah. I just mean in terms of measuring, it's a little harder. It may be harder. Because right. we... So the CCA will help us access data, but it won't get us everything. And, you know, I mean, we're going to do the best we can with the information and the data that we have. It's all we can do. All right, guys. Well, we've already done over our a lot of time. So I'm going to call it. Um, unless, Andrew, do you have anything else to add or any, any other public comment? I just want to um, thank Andrew for sticking it out if you're still there listening. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is a very deep dive. <laughs> Our meetings are not all like this. <laughs> Great. OK, well, um, I will send out the updated version of this spreadsheet in a little bit. Um, but please do let me know if you have any questions. Um, and we'll talk again next week. Um, oh, I do have one other question. Included in the packet was um, but a, but a, but a CARP Strategies 1-4-21, is that something we should be paying attention to at this point? So that is everything that's in that document has been added to the action details tab. So it's okay. all the same. Lauren had, had heard from us that we wanted to see track changes. So she included, sent that to us because it shows the track changes based on other comments we've submitted but all of that is in this spreadsheet. So you should only need to look at this spreadsheet. Okay. Yep. Close that. <laughs> okay, thank you everybody. We'll see you next week. Okay. Thanks Very everybody, good. have a good thank week. You. Bye. Thank you.